disruptor. Hello, one and all. Welcome to this edition of Kits Corner. Up in a fantastic day so far. So, COVID nineteen. I feel like we still need to be talking about, even though it's twenty twenty four. Um, because of just how horrific the pandemic was, uh, both mentally, physically, and criminally, it was just an absolute disaster and an absolute just kind of psyops that has taken the global wide by storm. But also just done circum uh, so so much significant damage to people that I don't think people can even fathom just how much damage was done in the past just little few years that we en endured this pandemic, going through the hurdles of lockdowns to mandates to uh, vaccine injuries to how insane. Um, the times were at the time and still still to this day still to this day it's just absolutely horrific and it leads me into this story and i want to cover this because of the fact that we should not be uh silencing out or ignoring um the painful the painful horrific incidences that happened after uh, the mandates and the lockdowns. And this is why the Freedom Convoy did what they did. This is why Tamara Lynch and Chris Barber got together and a bunch of truckers decide that we need to come into Ottawa and bring a voice to people and allow people to uh, come together and stop this authoritarian measure before it does more damage to individuals and cause more horrific scenes during the, these uncertain times and, and, and try to really reason with people because this this pandemic, the propaganda, the propagandization and the lies and the manipulation has just screwed Canada so much. And so much so that's done physical harm and damage to people. So this comes after this got released. This is from the Canadian Independent on the Substack. And they wrote this article about uh, this woman, Kayla Pollock, the Ontario woman paralyzed after her COVID-19 booster shot files a $45 million lawsuit against Moderna. So this is a story that they have been covering for a little while now. I didn't realize till now uh, about this story because of the fact that they've hid this so long away from the mainstream light, away from social media. They've been trying to cover this up for so long. But it's stories like these that need to be heard. They need to be addressed. Whether you're on the side of for vaccine or against vaccine, whether whatever you feel about the pandemic and COVID and the Freedom Convoy and so on, it's stories like these that we need to hear. We need to address to the to the, to the loudest uh, decibel that people are reminded that this pandemic, this situation, the COVID nineteen shutdown, reopen, shutdown, lockdown, whatever you call it, the pandemic screwed many individuals in this way and how horrific the pharmaceutical industry how they capitalized and basically took over and in developed uh governments to formate this kind of fascist state to uh overrule over uh you know freedom and liberties and civil and individualities people weren't allowed to practice their bodily autonomy and 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 practice their abilities as individuals as patients uh to read up on things and to look into things and ask questions and be curious that's what you're supposed to do as a patient uh when you're getting medical treatments especially ones that are untested and experimental which is what covid really was sadly um so this goes on by saying the Canadian Independent first report on Kayla Pollock's story a week ago, and since then it has received international attention. Donations have uh, poured in from all around the world to help Kayla obtain a service dog and wheelchair accessible vehicle. On February 22, 2024, a lawsuit seeking $45 million in damages was filed on behalf of Kayla against Moderna. The claim seeks physical, emotional, and psychological damages Loss of past and future income, 
future cost of care, pain and suffering, as well as aggravation and punitive damages. Kayla is a 37-year-old Ontario woman and mother whose life became a living hell after a Moderna booster shot left her paralyzed. Her medical records confirm a link between her paralysis and the Moderna booster shot. An audio recording between Kayla and her neurologist reveals he believed her paralysis was caused by the vaccine. In the recording, he tells her that it's his gut impression it was caused by the vaccine, and he mentions seeing this happen to many people. Many people. Not few, not just a couple. Many people. So again, this is why this story is so important that I need I, I had to cover this. On two occasions, Kayla was offered medically assisted death as a way to escape her uh, paralyzing situation, but she refused. I it's it's so amazing here in Canada that here in 2024, as they think that we're progressing and doing, you know, in, innovating for healthcare and and bettering for ourselves, I love how here in Canada, your first option. The first thing they tell you when you have a situation that requires medical treatment is suicide. That's what's happening here in Canada. Like our healthcare is deteriorating that much that the first thing they mention, the first thing that comes to mind is you could kill yourself because you're not going to be well in society. You're not thin enough to be in Canada. You need medical assistance. We are not going to bother to do that. So you might as well just kill yourself. That's what they say to veterans. That's what they say to mentally ill people. And that's what they also say to young people that could have had a second chance if they were told that they had a second chance. But this is this this is the this is the insanity. This is the true evil of our Canadian government in action. Along with big pharmaceuticals. Uh, Kayla encounters difficulties uh, securing the essentials items for a basic everyday life. In response, an organization called Veterans for Freedom has launched a fundraiser to collect funds, admitting to prov- uh, uh, aiming to provide her with the necessary support. A link to the fundraiser is down below. So, um, here's the Canadian Independent on X, formerly known as Twitter, um highlighting the audio recording when her neurologist pointed out that this could be linked to the vaccine, which is very safe and effective. Um, and just listen to how devastating this is. Listen to how gory and just, it, 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 it pops a lot of red flags to hear this. Um, it says Ontario neurologist, admits that COVID-19 vaccinations are causing paralysis in many people during a record converse, recorded conversation with this patient who developed transverse mellitus after the shot. Kill the patient featured in the in the recording became paralyzed after receiving the Moderna booster shot. You can also watch her full video and we'll show part of the uh, interview afterwards, but listen to the exchange between her and the doctor and just the doctor, because of so many physicians and so many uh, healthcare professionals that have been cultivated within the big pharmaceutical industry, and a lot of them are just, you know, pill pushers at this point. But here's this neurologist that has to come forward, has to be kind of the whistleblower to say there could be a connection. There's, there's a lot of obvious clues that are connected from the vaccine to you being paralyzed. Listen to this. So basically, it's either a tumor that has to be removed. Less likely, right? Less likely to work. Right. Okay. Right. Less likely. How, so, what's a cancer work that way? Well, if you use the CT chest abdomen pelvis just to make sure there's no other areas of malignancy. Okay. So that's what that is. But most likely it's going to be probably, if I'm using my gut impression here, from the vaccine. So other people have had it? Though? Many people have had it. Many? Many. So he basically came forward and admit that my gut impression is something to do with the vaccine. 
And then he states afterwards, his argument there was the fact that he's seen many people with similar symptoms and they all had something in common. And I bet you I know what that commonality is. Maybe it's something to do with the fact that, oh, did they ask, hey, when did you get your last booster? Could that be related? Could that be medically and analyzed to the fact that maybe somewhere down the line, this could be connected to what you're dealing with right now? But they don't want us to know that. They don't want us to know important information, medical, uh, medical testing. They don't want us to know any of this for the sake of big pharmaceuticals to make big bucks on us. And it's just absolutely devastating. Absolutely devastating. But I can tell you for the sake of YouTube that the vaccines are very safe and effective. This is just one woman's point of view. This is just one story that of the thousands of thousands of other people that have safely injected themselves. I can tell you they're very safe and effective for the state for the sake of YouTube. Um, which I don't know if I can even allow this story to be on YouTube, to be honest. But here's so that was the audio recording here. And now here's part of the interview where Canadian Independent interviewed the woman. Uh uh and 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 listen to what she says about afterwards getting the booster shot. So listen to this. So I received two Pfizer's and then a Moderna. I had no issues with the first two f vaccines, which were the Pfizer's, and it wasn't until the Moderna shot the booster that I began having problems. A week after receiving her third mRNA COVID-19 vaccine in January of 2022, Kayla fell to the floor, paralyzed for 30 minutes, unable to move her legs. A second episode occurred a week later, which prompted Kayla to make an appointment with a neurologist through her family doctor. On the morning of February 22, 2022, before she could see the neurologist, Kayla would wake to find that she was paralyzed from the neck down. Kayla relives this day. Um, I opened my eyes that morning, and as soon as I opened my eyes, I realized, oh, it's time to get up. You got to get, you know, get up and get going, get your coffee in you. It's time to go to school. And I went to get up, and I couldn't move from the neck down. And that's when I was uh, uh, put on a stretcher and taken to South Lake Regional Health Center. Um, and, um, that's when the events at South Lake started. Um, when I first arrived, originally the an ER doctor did come in to examine me and then he took away the, uh, the back, the backboard. So I'm like, okay, this is good because that means I'm not paralyzed. And he told me that, um, this was something that often happens to people when they're upset and that I, essentially, this was in my head. And the good news was that I would get better because I was essentially having an episode that was some sort of psychotic episode and that um, I'd never had any history of anything like that before, but he was telling me this, so I thought this was wonderful news. I asked him when I would get better and he said, you know, it, it, it's up to you, really. Um, I'm going to have the psychiatrist uh, come and see you. So he ordered a psych consult and he left me there. He left me there for the entire day. Um, so originally that was the, uh, the first diagnosis. The second diagnosis, a, a doctor came to me and he whispered in my ear and he said, I think there's something seriously wrong with you. I do not think you're faking. And um, he said, I have a neurologist or a radiologist who's willing to read your report at home. If you go into the scanner right now, I can get that done. And I said, absolutely, because I don't think I'm crazy either. There's something really wrong with me. I am not faking this. That's just ethically criminally wrong. Everything, like the fact that doctors, and this is just, goes to show you that even our Canadian healthcare system our Canadian healthcare system that 
we value, we cherish, we always praise about that we have, you know, this universal health care, the basic coverage that every Canadian citizen is, you know, uh, supports and adores, part of our heritage. Tommy Douglas, like, you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. But the problem with our health care system compared to other nations that also have universal health care and why other nations seem to be better when it comes to providing care to people is that our health care, much like the United States, the only difference is the United States is completely privatized. Here in Canada, we have basic coverage, but we also have private entities that are corroding inside the healthcare system. The, yeah, you have basic coverage to the fact that you can go into a hospital and not get charged going through the door. But the fact that they cultivated doctors to the point where you can't even get a proper diagnosis without a doctor, a second doctor, not the ER doctor, but the other doctor, had to whisper in her ear like it was some sort of... I, I, classified secret that hey your report is actually this you're not crazy we're not sending you to a therapist this is not this it's it's, it's actually worse than you imagine you were actually sick we have actually have proof they were lying to you from the start so that that is revelating and I and I generally feel disgusted because as someone that got two shots of the Pfizer myself at the start of this pandemic, I got two shots of Pfizer and my second shot, and I'm still kind of vaccine injured to this day because of it. I remember the literally an hour, literally an hour after I got that second shot from my neck down and I wasn't like paralyzed but I was completely stiff. I was numb. I was in pain. I could feel it, not just in the spot where they injected me, but all down my arm. I was in dire pain. I couldn't even work for two days straight. I couldn't work for two days because I was in such dire pain. I couldn't move. I, I was just, I, I, I didn't know what to do. And I called people. I called, you know, my family doctor. I, call, I called to figure out what the hell is going on. And they told me that it, it, it could it, it will relapse at some point. You just gotta play through the pain. You gotta be you know, rest up and play through the pain. Well, it's been what two two years later, three years later, after my second shot of Pfizer, and there's times where I still get a bit of shoulder pain, throbbing shoulder pain from vaccine injury. So I understand this woman's pain and I understand it because so many other people, just like the report says, many people suffered through the untested mandates that they knew they knew it was massively corrupted. They knew that this is a medical experimentation done on people unwillingly and they mandate on people and now they're suffering the consequences. Why? Because it was not fully tested. They lied to you from the start. And that's why this woman, this 37-year-old mother in Ontario, is now paralyzed. And her last resort is going after Moderna for lying to her face and corroding the healthcare industry that doctors couldn't even tell her exactly what was going on with her. They said that she she was going crazy, that she needed to go see a shrink, a shrink for not being able to move, to being paralyzed. It's just, I have no words. I have no words. And I feel this woman's pain. I feel the anger that many people, I'm sure, that are watching this and have seen other reports are feeling uh, just... It shows how betrayal this is, it's how, 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 how insulting and, and vigorous and just and deeply, deeply um, malicious this all is, right down to the bone. And from everyone from Fauci to Collins to Bill Gates to 
of the people at Pfizer to Justin Trudeau to Christian Freeland, all the people responsible, Teresa Tam, uh, who's the national health director here in Canada, all those people still continue to lie to us, still continue to this day to lie to us. Even after all these stories, all these reports, all this information that's coming out and reveling to people, and the mass amounts of censorship they're still trying to do on people to hide stories like this because they want to cover up the fact that they have done damage, personal, individual damage to people, physical and mental abuse of people throughout this pandemic. They don't want to be exposed to that. They just want to tell you that's safe and effective. And at some point, uh, when you're, you know, 80 years old, because Next 75 years, they're going to hide the information until about, you know, the time I'm dead. So maybe my kids or future generations can look back at this and then see if the vaccines are actually safe and effective. Instead of just showing the reports of what's happening right now, like individuals like Kayla that is now suffering, that is now suffering emotional and physical damage because of this pandemic, because of big pharmaceuticals corroding itself with government to enact these laws, enact um, authoritarian measures and mandates to villainize people, to get an experimental vaccine injected into them, and then gamble on their outcome, gamble on their health. Uh, on their health. There's now so many people that are suffering worse, free COVID. That, that if they did not get the injection, who knows? They could have maybe been better. There's there's so much of a gamble to this, but they, they just entirely jeopardize a nation's health for big pharmaceutical capital interests. It's sickening. It's disgusting. And Godspeed to this woman. Godspeed to this lawsuit. We, if there's more information to come, we will definitely follow on this because this, I feel like with m most people witnessing this is just absolutely horrific. And I, and I feel so much for this lady. I feel so much that you've been lied into. You've been suckered in thinking that this is going to be helpful and beneficial. You Again, the whole manipulation process when it came to COVID. That we're in this together. And if you if you get the boosters, then you're gonna save people. You're gonna save lives. You don't want to be a killer. You don't want to go out there and th and threaten the world. And now here you are, risking your life because a big pharmaceutical industry marketed a campaign of lies to you, and you just feel absolutely betrayed and and, and, and betrayed and lost. Just. Absolutely horrific.